morning, everyone. Um, Thursday morning tends to be a little bit tougher <laughs> <laughs> with all the parties and the fun that goes around South Summit, but I see you all good and refreshed. So thank you so much for being here. So as Liz was saying, we're going to continue with the Game Changer series, and we're now going to have a good chat on green mobility and logistics, and not only as a business, but also as a a contributor to sustainability. So it's a new approach to the way we move, the way we travel, the way we design our cities, and we just do business export um, in a safer, cleaner, and faster way. And I have two uh, key players in this field. And so Jasmine Faj is a co-founder and CEO of Gogo Network. It's um, an integral and competitive last mile autonomous delivery service. And overall, they're just even broader. They're building a whole legal and engineering framework um, for mobility networks, setting up for the future. Um, Yasmin is passionate about bringing innovation and systemic changes to societies and has gathered over 50 years of experience. 15, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are really good. And Alfonso de los Rios is the CEO of Now Sports, um, already valued at 1 billion. Congrats. And they are Thank streamlining you. LATAM shipping um, using digital tools to improve communication and efficiencies in the shipping process. So, welcome, both of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank so, you. for both um, shared mobility, autonomous mobility, and logistics, um, how do you think that this is really going to be a, a, a game changer for the way we move, the way we, we, we deliver our goods, both on a more kind of broader import export or on the last mile delivery? How is this really a game changer for the industry and also for sustainability? Jasmine? Yeah, so uh, hi, everyone. So if you think that um, Logistic, in, at least in city, is around 40% of emission of all the city, with 30% uh, of street occupation. Like you can just imagine, like the, the level of pollution and contamination we have every day. If you manage to do this in a more efficient way, in the same way that cars, for instance, have occupation of only 1.2, and there are five seats. In the same way, we have trucks right now that have like very little occupation. So on top of being you know, a source of pollution because it's not electric. They're also not, let's say, used in an optimized way in terms of capacity content. So if you can solve both issues, going electric, of course, but also doing it in a more efficient way with charge load and so on, uh, you can totally change uh, the way cities are, are currently living this growth of last mile uh, delivery that we're seeing. And uh, what, about, what about you? Yeah, Potter? I 100% I agree with, with Jasmine and the, at this point. Uh, when, we, when we see logistics as a whole, uh, mainly in the importing and exporting industry, there's a lot of area of, of opportunity regarding like, just visibility of carbon impact, right? And how just businesses can improve a lot of their processes just to transform them to digital and have more awareness of, the, of how much they are affecting the environment, how much they can save by only like, not printing documents. Just to give you an idea, when a company is importing on or exporting, at least they need to print 16 different documents. Wow. And there are companies that import more than 4,000 containers per month, right? So there's a lot of area of opportunity there just by digitizing. And I believe by creating awareness uh, across impact, right? How much are they contributing to save the planet, uh, to even like uh, save emissions between Asia and Latin America, which is one of the most um, damaged oh, trail lines in the world. Mm. And how, how, how ready are you for us? I mean, I think here you're, you're um, in your specific industry and sector, how, what are the challenges you're facing? How ready are regulation or big corporations to, to yeah. embrace this new technology? I, I definitely think because it's a really big industry. When you talk about logistics, it's just like a $650 billion industry about the, in the importing and exporting industry, right? So. There are a lot of players. There's a lot of government involved uh, regarding regulation, etc. But I think the main change uh, and the biggest impact in the industry as a whole, it's, big, it's coming from the big uh, clients, to call it on that way, okay. and not too much to the public sector. And that is a good thing, because clients are asking to have visibility of their impact, how they can save, etc. And just to give you an idea, at Nowports, we, we recently launched one one feature that it's just like calculating uh, carbon emissions based on your uh, on how many containers you're importing, right? Uh, which type of 
vessels are moving your cargo, etc. And having that visibility at least can give companies a chance to improve their, their internal processes to move along the way on, on a new way of industry, right? And I think the industry is moving on that way, mostly in the new, the new players, not only Nowports, but other startups uh, like Gogo, etc. Yeah, yesterday we had the chance to have Pablo Isla here, the former CEO of Inditex, and he was actually saying how exactly what you were saying. To what extent, like, big... Um, clients from your yeah. perspective, do you have that responsibility to yes. really kind of be the ones asking for uh, that tracking of their, 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 their footprint, but also kind of really to, I agree. to take a stand in the industry? They have this responsibility. You, are you seeing it beyond what? Yeah, no, we are, we are definitely seeing it. And it's not because carriers or government don't want to, uh, to improve on that way, but it's actually because uh, clients such as Inditex or we are seeing in the automotive industry like Audi, Mercedes, like really big efforts regarding uh, just having visibility of their impact and doing things through that, right? Uh, there are big brands that are launching 100% uh, recyclable t-shirts, etc., cetera. And, and that's really just uh, not only in the product, but in the overall process that includes the logistics, manufacturing, delivery, uh, last mile even, Etc. Cool. Um, Jasmine, what about you? Um, you're more operating on a city level. Um, what are the challenges you're still facing? No, as I was listening to Alfonso, I was thinking for him, actually, it's true that like regulation is less of an issue for, than for us. But for yeah. us, since we have to work with the cities, and at the end of the day, they are responsible for the traffic, the mobility, etc. And on top of that, that we are bringing on top of electrification, uh, digitalization, optimization, the autonomy layer. Which, uh, there, there is a lot of regulatory work that needs to be done because it's bringing a new technology, a new, a new way of uh, moving. So we are working a lot with regulators, with cities, with, uh, at the national and city level. But I think it's, it's what needs to happen, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, infrastructure may need also to be changed. So there is a dialogue and a dance that needs to happen between the city owner, the food partner or the retailers that work with us, and the technology provider and operators that we are. How do you see, I mean, you have strong footprint in Europe. Um, how do you see Europe versus US or a versus Asia? Is this, because yeah, so we, we were kind of taken stand, but yeah. are, are you seeing? <laughs> no, it's a very uh, I mean, interesting question. And when we started, we looked, I mean, we were in the US, I was in Singapore, like we look at the different uh, way uh, both companies and regulators were approaching the issue of autonomy and let's say, uh, last mile auton autonomy, but also for passenger. I would say in Europe, we have a, it's a tougher market in the sense that there is more regulation and the cities are more complex to navigate. Yeah. Um, I would say in the US, they have more uh, an approach of let's say fair, let's do it and then let's regulate a posteriori, but let's let the innovation grow. In Europe, we are more like, let's make sure we regulate everything so that it's very clear and then we let people go. But by doing that, it's very hard when it's something new, you cannot forecast everything. So it's, um, I would say Europe is more challenging, but what I feel though is that they understand that if we don't want to lose another huge industry, which will be like uh, autonomous electric, uh, um, that's my delivery, and also they have to move. So they are moving, but I think right now we are still not uh, in the lead space, but I think there's a lot, there are a lot of opportunities and there are a lo lot less competition also. Okay. Um, so sustainability as a cause of anything, something that is, is it's not just a must. I mean, there's just yeah. no discussion about it. But, uh, but I think the interesting with these two cases um, that you're both bringing is like, there's also a big business opportunity. Yeah. Um, how are you seeing kind of this opportunity uh, deploying throughout the world? Like, are you, you feel yourself like wearing the right wave also from a, from a business perspective? Yeah, w when we talk about sustainability as a business, only as, as you just mentioned, right? A lot of time it's, it's not directly related to profits and, and just creating like long-term businesses, which I think it's important, right? Um, but in logistics in a specific, we, we did an internal research at Nowport just before this summit uh, regarding automation of importing and exporting processes, right? And when we, uh, when we talk about the documents that are involved on an import and export transaction, and then we talk about like warehouse visibility and automation, et cetera, that there's a lot of area of opportunity and sustainability there. Uh, it's a market just in Latin America of around $44 billion, wow. right? So if you can save companies at least like 
of between 10 and 15 percent, which is what we are doing just by not printing some documents, uh, not needing to do some manual processes that had a carbon impact, etc., and also giving them a carbon or environmental impact score based on their activities through our platform and software, etc. I think there's a really good business opportunity there. We we are. Uh, just launching, as, as, as I mentioned, this new feature that tracks all your environmental impact. And mm -hmm. that will definitely not only help us as a business to create more revenue, but actually um, for the importers and exporters to uh, either decrease taxes, decrease like some, uh, some costs that they have inside their operations just to improve as a company, right? And have a better impact worldwide. Well, what about you, kind of from... Yeah, I mean, expected. in our case, um, for sure, the, the business opportunity is huge because when you think, I mean, just looking at autonomy, when you think that 70% of the cost of any company uh, moving goods or people is the driver, when you are able to, uh, you know, optimize those economics, have more consistency, because a lot of so of the issue that, like, you know, food partners have is like the the inconsistency in between riders and so on, when you are able to optimize that and also lower the cost of actually the driver, yeah. then it's a trillion, like it's, the, it's one of the biggest industry that is coming. That's why Google, uh, even if Google is Google and you know them well, they have been uh, investing over 100 million every month for the last 13 years in developing this technology because this is going to change everything. And uh, even the CAPTCHA that when you see like, oh, I have a, you have to check, do you see a road, do you see a tree, do you see a you know, traffic light? This is all to, uh, you know, to develop this algorithm to be able to create these uh, networks of uh, autonomous fleets. And, and uh, I mean, it's, it's for sure there's, a automa there's this, this is mo the more short term is, is what you're like tackling, which I think is, uh, you know, like how do you optimize the logistic process? When you on top add, there will be no more driver, and it's like autonomous vehicles. Then, like uh, the opportunity is massive. Yeah, I mean, I think you're talking about kind of self-driving cars and how it all started. Also, I mean, yeah, but even trucks or self-driving trucks, self-driving like we have small delivery robots. We have your we have your little baby over there. Yes, for instance, like it's just one example <laughs> of small vehicles, but like you know, you cannot imagine that, like in. 10 years or five years or other, they're just going to be still like people coming in bags, bringing you a bag of food. Like it makes no sense. Yeah. So going a little bit more. Um, so I wanted two things like with you going a little bit more futuristic, like how how close you see we are to actually really um, have a whole kind of autonomous network of mm. driving cities. How do you imagine the cities of, of the future? How close are we to really autonomous vehicles yeah. running around? So I've been asking my question since I started this company three years and a half ago, and it's a very hard question. And I think we were a bit old, more bullish a couple of years ago. Um, I think what, what I've learned at least is that you have to differentiate use cases because autonomy in general actually is too broad to really be able to put any timing. So you have to think, is it first uh, people or is it goods? Is it like at which speed in, in, in geolocalized area or like everywhere? Because what you want is to kind of simplify the work of the algorithm or the technology. And so what you realize is that, of course, like the robot taxi, let's say, Grail, it's still, I would say personally, eight, ten years from even if Waymo is doing some service in, in Phoenix and Cruise in San Francisco to really get that scale, we're still not there. But what I see at least much more closer is this, this in between, between kind of like robotics and autonomy, which is like vehicles that are doing more packages, that are going at smaller speeds, that are like, or that, that are on highway, on dedicated lane. This is coming. This is coming in the coming years. Um, the, and, and it will also depend on um, geographies. Yeah. So for instance, in uh, Saudi Arabia, the Neon project is easy because you build the city thinking that everything will be autonomous, which is like uh, you know, this new city that is built from scratch. Or if you go to Singapore, it's a much more modern city. In China also. So there are some geographies that will be easier and some geographies that will be also slower. Um, and I think in Europe, what will be a game changer, it will be, for instance, in Paris, as an example, in 2024, the first, second, third, fourth arrondissement are going to be prohibited to have car in, inside. So then what does it mean? It means that then it's much easier for an autonomous shuttle to go around and pick up people because the biggest... 2024, uh, you said? Yeah. Okay. 2024, uh, no more uh, private cars. 
in the city center. So then you can start, you know, like it needs also to be, as I was saying, a dance between the infrastructure, the way city evolved and the technology. But just trying to put autonomous car on the current state will not work. Yeah, definitely. Um, Alfonso, also a question. I mean, I think in this, in this past two years between COVID with that kind of with the pandemia, it was <laughs> to have such a need for instant supply uh, of some things that were not really available. It was yeah. a huge need. And also the last year, a lot of geopolitical uh, turmoil that had really cut some supply chains and suddenly something that we just were not even thinking about it. And so I was like, oh, shit. I mean, yeah. my husband works, works in the wine industry. There are no bottles. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, and, <laughs> um, so how, how this plays around, how is you as a, as a kind of more, not a small, but startup yeah. player, do you think are influenced or can influence all this kind of... Yeah, no, for sure. Um, when, we, when the pandemic started, we were just 80 persons working at Nowports and trying to digitize an industry that was the same for the last 70 years. And we grew from 80 employees to more than 600, uh, like just from one country uh, to more than uh, 10 different cities in Latin America right now in eight, eight countries, etc. And I think the, the main driver of that was just the demand that we were getting, right? Most of the biggest importers and exporters across Latin America were looking for a new solution that could give them like visibility, notifications, automation, etc. And it's interesting to hear like different points of view regarding logistics because when we see the biggest uh, sustainability impact that uh, the import and export industry can have in the next 10 years, it doesn't come too much through automation, right? Uh, it comes mostly from the engines. When you see the, the environmental impact of importing or exporting something, around 86% of the carbon impact comes from the engine of the vessels and not too much through the automation of movements, etc. right? So it's a really different industry. I think it's changing and the pandemic just helped everyone to automate processes. Uh, the, the fact that I gave about printing documents more than 16 every time they need to import and export decreased significantly during the pandemic because obviously like physical processes were not available in Latin America as yeah. an emerging market, right? So for the first time you were able to upload them to your platform, etc. And that really helped Nowports uh, to be the first player position there. Yeah, right? this is where we see sometimes like crisis come real big opportunities yes. for driving change and, uh, and especially for this game changer. Um, we've been really talking mainly about the, the industry and if we have time, we might come back to it. But more from a business as founder's perspective or as <clears throat> the head of, of these companies, um, there's the importance from a industry perspective, from a market opportunity. What about the talent? We see, are you, are you seeing more talent shifting towards sustainability companies? Are you seeing, what are your main also yeah. challenges um, as kind of leading companies uh, in this sector? I, I think that's a really good point. And it's not only on sustainability, but I think it's just like overall in every, in every kind of industry, right? People like to work on a company that can really transcend through time, right? And have a really big mission and just a really big impact, not only in the region, but as a worldwide, like just mission and company. And I think talent is just like, not only looking for new jobs regarding sustainability impact and all of that, but also just that they can impact and they can like uh, really contribute to the overall mission of the company. And I think most of our sustainability uh, initiatives have come from our own team, right? Uh, the, the carbon detector and, and just automation of documents, etc. And I think that's really good just for the future because new companies are just sustainability friendly by default and not by, by trying to acquire new processes, etc. Exactly, because we see, I mean, funding is there. Funding is there and available for... Wait. You hear me? Yeah. Uh, we see that funding you've both been able to raise, um, but um, what about you in terms of access to talent to continue growing your company? No, I would say I agree with uh, Alfonso. I think uh, we are lucky to be a generation that didn't have like, too many real issues, like if COVID is one, but what I mean is that people are really uh, they are lucky to think about their job, not just as a way of surviving and feeding a family, but have finding purpose. And the new generation is all, all about this. So I would say for us, it's, it's easy. And also, it's, it's good to see a lot of women that go into mobility, not because 
I would say the automotive industry is just very, 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 very male driven. Totally. Uh, but the mobility space is different because it's about uh, so many things changing the way people move, society, uh, impact, sustainability. So I think in this sense, it's an attractive space and people feel that, you know, they are making a change and they hate to see the city contaminated. They hate to see that they have to do one hour of traffic. They hate to see the trucks. So they, they know that they're solving a real problem, right? Okay, so thank you f so much, both of Thanks. you, for spending this thank you. Uh, time with me. And I uh, hope you enjoy your stay in, yeah. in Spain. And uh, really best of luck to both of you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks for hosting thank us. Thank you for hosting us.